Now, I know many of you out there are kind of probably statistics and data geeks, and so the reason to do all this crop planning and record keeping is so you can see the data and statistics it generates and what this means for your business. And this is really, in a sense, testing the model as well to see how accurate it is and to see how good your projections are. So let's start by looking at a, at a production overview. So this just basically breaks things down uh, in, in, a, in a more simple form. Even though we've seen these numbers elsewhere, uh, they're just all broken down in terms of uh, each crop, the total number of trays of each, the different units we've sold, live trays sold, things like that, all in one place. Then it summarizes the, the cost overview. So seeds and soil, packaging, sanitizer, labor, overhead costs, things like that. And it distributes it per tray. And you can see we're paying about $10.45 in labor per tray. So that's a big, that's a big cost there. Um, the important thing to keep in mind, though, is this does include your labor. So one of those expenses is yours. So you're paying yourself a wage. We've assigned our overhead there and we've got a, 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 our, our total expenses and our average cost per tray. So our average cost per tray is $15.81 per tray. And you'll recall our projected revenue per tray, or our, our um, target revenue per tray was $18 per tray. So now we need to see how close to that we've gotten. So it, this breaks down revenue by uh, from Tuesday and Friday to get our total revenue. And you can see our projected profit is at this model, at this point, is only $436. And so our projected revenue a tray per tray is only $15.86. So basically, in the end, the business is making five cents per tray, which seems a bit ridiculous. Um, but once again, this is after all your expenses are covered and everybody's been paid. Now, of course, as a business, you want to have a buffer and you want the business to make money, one, so you can expand. And two, if you're an entrepreneur and this is your business, extra money the business makes goes to you as well. So this isn't a set in stone number. This is a OK. We've, we've run these numbers, we've done our projections, we've done all this. Let's take a look back now at the model and get a sense of how accurate is this. Um, let's go through a bit more with a fine tooth comb and see to what degree uh, we, can, we, can, um, we can change this. Uh, or you might go, you know what, we've done a pretty good job of this and if this is all the extra that's going to be made and I'm only going to get paid 18 bucks an hour, it's not worth it. And, and it's going to be very different in everybody's situation. So this is where things get broken down. And really, the, these are the kind of the, this is really the number right here. Like these here are the numbers that determine uh, whether to go ahead or where you need to make changes. Now, a small change can make a very big difference. And I'm just going to go back. We're going to go back to our crop planner here. I'm just going to open up our Tuesday and Friday harvests. So they're both there. And I'm going to say, OK, you know what, you know, and we actually made one of the we actually we made this change already. We, we made that change. We bumped the people from 16 up to $18. So we've already done that. Um, and now we're like, OK, well, you know, is this a thing? So I think the market can only bear $18. Let's take a look down here. OK, so everything here is kind of set. The question here is, do we go up to 19 or $20 for those larger units, for example? Um, I'm going to refer back to our um, crop and input costs are uh, coming back here. You know, I, I keep coming back to this idea of, of the clamshells. That's $5,000 in expenses. I'm going to start questioning whether that's something uh, I want to be doing as part of my model when I could probably do some more farmers markets, bring my farmers market costs up, but also more labor that goes to me, right? So um, uh, we could look at that, trying to sell more there and less clamshells because that, that's a big expense. And, and we're also getting a low return on those because we're wholesaling them to grocers at a lower price. So that's another thing I'm thinking about right now. Then I'm also going to look at wages here. And I've got three wages set, okay? And I've broken things down in this way and I've already thought about this. Like I want my lowest wage person to be doing maybe a little more of the grunt work. So they come in a little earlier they do some of the longer hours, which is how we've got it set here. So maybe it's one of those things where um, I'm going to split the markets and this low wage person is going to do half the markets with, with this other person. 
And a quick way to do that is actually just to go like this for these purposes and see what happens. So we're basically we're splitting the, the markets along there. So let's kind of go back and take a look here. So now we've made $1,000. So I can see by making changes like that, um, our revenue is, is going up. So this is where you start going through and really starting to think, and I'm just going to change this back, um, starting to think about um, where things make sense. Now, depending on your market, probably the, the place you're going to want to go uh, first is, is to your pricing. And pricing is, is key. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm going to change each of these to $20. We're going to sell our product at $20 a pound. So I'm going to change that for my Tuesdays. And it's already changed it for my Fridays. I don't need to change it there. Don't forget not to edit your Friday numbers. Um, and I'm going to go back here. And now these numbers start to make sense. So now we're making $16.76 per tray. Uh, and and I think the market can bear twenty dollars a pound, so that that has to be realistic as well. And this is good. This is good profit for the business. Um, it's only about five percent. So if I keep that, it's only five percent buffer. Um, but this is just one year of production, right? And so um, there's that to consider. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to keep these at eighteen because I'm not trying to create a perfect model here. I'm trying to create a realistic model. Um, and then there's one other thing I wanted to look at changing. So one of the things I need to go back and look at is my crops as well. So what are, and actually we're actually just getting to, to some of these things, our individual crop production costs. So uh, we're going to come to that. So now I need to look at each crop in detail to understand like what, which of my crops are making me money and which aren't as well. So there's a lot of things to consider um, when you get this number. And so uh, some of it can be labor, some of it can be your pricing, some of it can be what markets you do or don't do, your packaging. And so you can see if we, if we, if we change our pricing and we do less of those clamshell packaging, all of a sudden the model makes a lot of sense. However, it might mean absorbing more farmers market costs or, or things like that. So there's a lot of things to consider within that. So when we look at these numbers, we have to do some investigation to understand them and then apply them to our situation to understand uh, how viable things are going to be. And keeping in mind, this is one year of production at $125,000, um, and this is a model. And it is very much based on a realistic scenario from the food peddlers. Um, but, you know, $125,000, like this should be your minimum goal which you may not make in your first year, but in years two or three, you need to be getting to these numbers if you're producing year round to make this worth it. Um, and then you're like, okay, well, what does $150,000 look like or 175? And at, at this scale, a lot more revenue comes with very little more expense in terms of labor because you're already very efficient, right? You know, adding a bunch more trays in a harvest doesn't add like a bunch more hours. It adds a few more hours because your setup and your breakdown time doesn't change very much. So some tasks take a little bit longer, but they already take quite long as it is. So this is the scale at if you're starting, as soon as you start really bumping up those numbers, um, things start to make sense. So keep in mind, you're, you're going to do production over multiple years and hopefully your revenue is going to go up. So these numbers will change over time. So that's a look at how these things break down. Let's take a look at some of the other breakdowns uh, in, the, in a few more tutorials uh, for the remaining parts of the spreadsheet.